how the coronavirus pandemic and the BLM, Antifa riots, protests are connected and what rabbis are not telling you about it. One thing I noticed when the coronavirus first hit was that everyone had their own take, perspective on it. If you are a religious person, you see it all through the lens of the Bible and prophecy. If you are considered a conspiracy theorist, you see it all through the lens of conspiracies. If you are a secular or atheist, it's all about the science. This is why I have waited so long before making my own video about how and why all this is happening. I really didn't have a coherent, all-encompassing reason. It took these riots to happen for things to become crystal clear. So now I will briefly try to break down my perspective which includes all views that are all connected. How Biblical Plagues Compare to Coronavirus In the past weekly Parshas, Torah portions, Shelach and Korak, we read two instances of plagues. One strikes down the ten spies, the other strikes down 250 followers of Korak, Dathan and Abiram who quarreled against Moses and Aaron as leaders. What they both have in common is they all went against God but in different ways. The spies had no faith in God to overcome the obstacles to take the land. The 250 men failed to realize that it was God, not Moses who killed Korach, Dathan and Abiram for speaking against Moses and Aaron and didn't heed the warning from God. So how does this relate to this current plague we are experiencing? It doesn't really. When the passages speak about the plague, it doesn't specify exactly what this plague is or how it kills the people. It doesn't say it makes some sick, and some die. Everyone who gets the plague dies. This is judgment directly from God who was in their midst. This coronavirus is nothing like this. The rabbis pretty much all agree that it's due to Lashon Hara, evil speech. But Lashon Hara against whom? Against God, or against each other? They say mostly against each other. But the plagues in the Torah are due to Lashon Hara against God and his appointed leaders. You could, however, make the argument that God uses plagues to subdue or control his people. The ones who disobey him. So what do we see now with this pandemic? Governments, elected, and unelected authorities using the fear of coronavirus to subdue and control their people. It's becoming increasingly obvious that the politicians, health establishment, mainstream and social media are working together with a political agenda to manipulate the masses towards the total destruction of American and Western society. Their directives are contradictory and confusing. You are called a murderer and fined and arrested if you protest against wearing a mask because this virus is so dangerous, even though there are mixed messages and studies disputing the effectiveness of masks. But when a black man was killed, Suddenly hundreds of scientists claim the threat of white supremacy is more dangerous than coronavirus and protesters by the thousands without masks are ignored. Then, our democratic leaders forbid the health authorities to ask about or track anyone who attended a BLM protest. Then when infection rates skyrocketed, conveniently it was not in those areas that had protests because no one was tracking them. Also because most came from out of state. Now we have the government on the one hand saying it's better to congregate outdoors versus indoors, but still close beaches and playgrounds. Open indoor businesses but still want to close places of worship. Now California is saying you can't sing in churches or synagogues. This is directly targeting everything the left hates. You can feel that they are intentionally trying to break down the social cohesion of what brings people together. Well, except to do everything over the internet, except now you can't freely speak your opinions. And now scientists are saying it's airborne just from breathing, not just from water droplets. So what then? So then a mask would be mandatory. I am not saying don't wear masks. I'm merely making the connection to the manipulation of information. The connection with the protests, riots. These riots are no random event. The same thing happened six years ago with Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri and a string of other shootings of both armed and unarmed black men in 2016 that led to riots in which then-President Obama endorsed. It happened in 2018 with Stephen Clark in Sacramento, California It happens every election cycle. It happens to remind blacks that they are oppressed and it's the Republicans and whites' fault. And the Democrats are the only ones who are on their side. And it works. 
and Antifa and BLM are there for the dirty work. In a way, they are being just as manipulated as the blacks. They are all useful idiots in the larger scheme to destroy America and Western culture. And don't think Israel will be spared. If America goes down, they will go straight for Israel next. The globalists know a Palestinian state would not be democratic. That's why they support it, under the guise of human rights. Again, I believe they are also using Islamic extremism to do their dirty work which includes the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Once you start to take a wider view of things, you can see how the few at the very top are totally orchestrating literally everything. Who are the very few? I'm not going to name names, but we all know the usual suspects. Just follow the money. Why is this all happening? It's happening because we allowed it to happen. It's happening because we have replaced God with these leaders who themselves do not follow God. God is letting it happen because we have turned away from Him and His laws and turned to men and their own laws. It's not just about law Shan Hara because this virus doesn't come from God. It comes from man. It's about general godlessness in the name of equality and human rights. So why did this affect the Jewish community so much? You can make all the excuses you want for why the religious Jewish community has seemed to suffer more with this virus, but make no mistake, they are also to blame for replacing God with their leaders. They have made themselves and their sages as idols no less than the secular who worship themselves or science. As an example, with this Parsha of Shelach and the Ten Spies. I read no less than five different rabbis' interpretations of it, and not one included the basic plain meaning stated in the Torah of the reason for the spies giving a bad report. One only focused on the Zohar and why Moses asked if there were any trees. The answer had to do with the tree of life in the Garden of Eden that was now apparently in the land of Israel. One said the ten spies went in with a wrong preconceived intention thinking they would have to actually work the land and didn't want to put in the work. Or that Moses wanted them to be tourists, as if they are staying in an Airbnb. Not spies. When God himself gives the reason. They lacked faith. Faith in the God who took them out of Egypt. Why is it even necessary to imagine other reasons? This itself is the very definition of going against God and worthy of a plague. Do you not see that? When you miss the point and lesson entirely, you are bound to repeat it. And you wonder why the rabbis say we are still suffering from the sin of the ten spies. This is why. What to do about it practically? Recognizing the reality is half the problem. The solution is multi-layered and complex. For the religious Jews in America, don't wait for the elections thinking Trump will win and things will be okay. It will give them even more reason to be violent. It won't stop or get better. And if Biden wins, it will only be now sanctioned and adopted by the Democrats. The pandemic won't stop, it will all be used to further the end goals of the globalists. They are already preparing us for more pandemics. You must make Aliyah now. Or you risk losing whatever material things you have when the economy collapses. At least in Israel you will be protected by the IDF and government. America is not your home. It never was. Israel is your home whether you like it or not. For everyone else, you will need to brace yourselves and prepare for all-out civil war and economic collapse. Did you know there is already a US coin shortage? Arm yourselves, for defense. Become a prepper. Become self-sufficient. And I was one of the ones who scoffed at these people. I am a person of faith, I trust in God to protect me. But it's becoming obvious with these riots that your leaders will not protect you and one is not mutually exclusive of the other. What to do about it spiritually? If you will heed Jehovah your God diligently, doing what is upright in his sight, giving ear to his commandments and keeping all his laws, then I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I Jehovah am your healer. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. If the reason for all of this is godlessness, then the remedy is godliness. It's more than just not speaking Lashon Hara. It's about turning to God rather than to man as your savior. So maybe God has made our leaders confused and weak just in order for us to turn back to him and follow his instructions for life. And all these Republicans, Libertarians, Conservatives, who are also Christians, 
need to realize that it is the American Constitution that allowed this to happen. Realize that America was flawed from the beginning. They are still laws created by man and not God. You must follow the Ten Commandments at the very least. Even better to follow the whole Torah. I can see no other outcome to the division than to literally separate everyone geographically into areas of just one ideology, whether it be democratic and socialist, communist or even between the left or right liberal and conservative, or between religious and secular. Things only work when everyone is free to choose to live among those who are of the same mind. If you want to live in a communist society, fine. But don't force everyone else to. That's true liberty and equality. Everyone is equal in his choice to live his own values where one chooses with other like-minded people. The success of each community, country will be judged by their outcomes. The reality though is that all societies will eventually collapse unless they are set up and sustained by God's laws. The end of days? Perhaps for the U.S. Israel has different circumstances that depend on other factors such as whether we apply sovereignty or not and if our leaders will stand up for Jewish values and against our adversaries. We are definitely in a dynamic and critical time of upheaval and change. More on the Israeli aspect in another video. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.